That was me. <laughs> I was born and grew up in China. My father used to be a barefoot doctor. They are farmers who received very minimal medical training but provide health care to the people in the villages. I have very vivid memories about how my father saw his patients. And one of the things he always said was, I wish I knew what disease you have. But try this drug, see if it works. If not, I'll give you something else. And there were these wonder drugs called antibiotics that he used to treat almost every patient, regardless of what they had. That was 30 years ago in a village in China. And it's still pretty much how we practice healthcare now in the US. This is my son, Alex. He got very sick a few months ago, we, you know, running very high fever. We went to the ER at 1 AM in the morning. The doctors ordered a whole bunch of tests but couldn't figure out what he had. They gave him antibiotics. The only thing they could do then was to wait and see how his condition evolved. Luckily for him, Alex fully recovered after a week. But I was extremely frustrated by this inability of our healthcare system. I know they're doing the best they can, but it's just not good enough. We need the tools, the power, to know exactly what is wrong with each patient so we can treat them most effectively. When it comes to antibiotics especially, this sort of empirical treatment has led to severe consequences. It occurs as a part of natural process in which bacteria evolve and come up with new genes to get rid of antibiotics. And our overuse and misuse of antibiotics in medicine has promoted such resistance and is making them less effective. You may have heard the story last year at a UCLA hospital. Two people were killed by antibiotic-resistant bacteria or superbugs for which there's no treatment. This is happening here in our backyard. Each year, two million people are sickened in the US with infections resistant to antibiotics. And at least 23,000 people die and these superbugs are quickly spreading, the numbers are rapidly growing. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention warns, if we don't do anything about it, antibiotic resistance can lead to catastrophic consequences. Antibiotics, once the wonder drugs or modern medicine are coming to an end. So just imagine for a moment what a post-antibiotic world would look like where we lose the power to fight simple infections a small scratch in the garden, or a child falling off their bike, will all start to claim lives again. Routine medical procedures, surgeries, and cancer treatment all are based on using antibiotics to prevent and treat infections. Without them, the entire modern medicine will be impossible. So how are we gonna deal with it? Pharmaceutical companies are making new antibiotics, but it takes them 10 years to make a new drug, and the bacteria evolve so quickly, they burst a new generation every half an hour, so we can't keep up. Some people say, we have already lost that war. Other people say, it is so hard to change the way we abuse antibiotics because it is a habit, a behavior, so we're hopeless. But I'd say the real problem here we face is the lack of tools, the tool that can provide definitive diagnosis, the information we need to make the right call about antibiotic use at the time that matters. You have heard from our personal experiences, physicians often make guesses and start treating you with antibiotics, almost like a little experiment around you. It may sound crazy, but that's how we do it today. That is really because the current test takes too long. When a doctor orders a test for a bacterial infection, they send your blood or urine to the lab and culture them to see if any bacteria grow. This culture method is derived from the 1800s and remains the gold standard now. The only problem is that it takes 
a very long time. It may take days or weeks to obtain mm -hmm. results. But the patient cannot wait for that long. They can't wait for their symptoms to worsen or spread. And in a case of sepsis, they can die within hours. That's why the physicians have to make those guesses and treat it empirically with antibiotics. Although we know that's not effective and it can lead to antibiotic resistance. So really what we need here is a faster test that can provide us the information much sooner. 10 years ago, when I just began my research career as a PhD student, I started to ask the question, why do the current tests take so long? It turns out finding bacteria in biological samples is like finding water here in this cartoon. So the challenge here is twofold. One, there are not enough wortles. In fact, there's only one wortle here in this cartoon. Similarly, the target bacteria exist at very low numbers in the sample. Two, you can see this is a very crowded cartoon. The people around Waddle look the same. So the difference between Waddle and others around him is very subtle. In biological samples, the bacteria are also surrounded by many confusing interfering materials, including human cells and proteins, making them very hard to find. In the current culture method, we, we grow them. We grow bacteria. We let them divide and proliferate until we can see them. But that is a very long process, and it can take a few days. Now, I'm very excited to share with you a new technology we invented recently called IC3D that allows us to solve this problem. So what we do here is we partition the sample and encapsulate them into many very small drops using a lab on a chip system. It's just like we split the people here and isolate every person into very small rooms so we can really eliminate the interference from each other. In each drop or this small room, we have bowel sensors that can specifically recognize the target bacteria and produce a very intense light. Just like we put a light on Waddle so we can see him easily. So essentially, the sensors can tell us whether there's bacteria in here, what kind of bacteria, and whether it is resistant to a particular antibiotic. Then we can scan the entire sample with a small high-speed microscope, which only take a few minutes. Now we have the test that can identify infections in less than one hour instead of days. We can now incorporate this rapid test into the decision-making process around antibiotic use. Instead of just guessing, physicians can now tell you definitively whether it is a flu or a bacterial infection, whether you need antibiotics, and if so, what kind of antibiotics you need. This is the new paradigm of precision medicine where we give the right drug to the right people at a time that matters. We can also use this test at the point of care, in doctor's office, at home, or anywhere in the world. So everyone now has the tool that provides the timely and the accurate information we need to make the right call about antibiotic use. By reducing unnecessary use of antibiotics, we can preserve the existing ones for the future. It buys us the time before new antibiotics arrive. We cannot stop bacterial evolution, but through this effort, we can make sure we are always ahead of them. Now, the healthcare problem I talked about here is not just about antibiotics. It is the inability to know exactly what's going on in our body. We have been living in the dark about our own health. How many times have you encountered the following? You fail a symptom, make an appointment, it can, get, it can take days to weeks to get to the doctor. Then you wait to check in the lobby, then you wait, you wait again upstairs, then you wait in your doctor's office until he shows up, then he only spends five minutes with you, and sometimes does not even look at you, or sometimes he goes to the internet and searches your symptoms and tells you something that you already knew. He might order some tests, but is still not sure what he has. Then he makes a guess and starts experimenting on you. Or in other cases, he finds something, but it's too late. And he says, I wish we knew it sooner. This has to change. So 
what is the future of healthcare? Where are we going? Now, just imagine a small sensor device that you can put in the body to monitor the status of your health and to detect diseases including cancer, heart attack, or Alzheimer's disease long before you feel a symptom. A device that allows us to avoid the need to see a doctor and avoid hospital visit entirely. It's not a science fiction anymore, it is happening now. In type 1 diabetes, for example, the artificial pancreas system has a lot of patients to live close to normal life where they don't even think about their diabetes anymore. So here, we put a sensor under the skin to measure the blood sugar levels on a continuous basis. And that information is transmitted through a controlled algorithm to a insulin pump to release the exact amount of insulin the body needs. With this new system, the patient no longer needs to prick their fingers for blood multiple times a day to measure their sugar level and then figure out how much insulin to inject. So this artificial pancreas system is currently in clinical trials and it will be in the market in the next few years. So what's really interesting is that some patients are so tired of waiting for regular approval. They just went ahead, they bought the CGM, insulin pump, and hacked the artificial pancreas system and started using it already. It's such a beautiful example to illustrate what the educated and empowered patient can do these days to proactively manage their own health. Now imagine you have a system like this for every other disease. So we're currently miniaturizing the bowel sensors we develop into small and implantable systems like this that we, we put in the body to monitor hundreds of essential health and disease biomarkers on a continuous basis. And that can be transmitted to your mobile phone and provide us the information we need to start changing outcomes. We hope one day we can use this system to detect the early signs of an impending stroke and active a drug to dissolve the clot before it even happens. Or identify cancer cells when they just begin to evolve. Or identify Alzheimer's disease 10 years earlier so we can treat it most effectively. Or even reverse it by simple lifestyle changes. It can also help us to quantify how our body responds to drugs, to environmental impacts, to food or exercise, leading to personalized management of our health and well-being. So I think we're really shifting the healthcare now from empirical, intermittent, reactive fashion, you know, we wait for the heart attack or cancer to be found, to a proactive, preventive, continuous, and individualized healthcare all enabled by the actionable health information we now obtain through these new tools. I think for the first time in the history of medicine, we, the patients, the consumers, are being set free. And that freedom allows us to pursue our rights to access and understand our own health. And that freedom is the most powerful tool that put us in charge to pursue a healthy and a happy life. Thank you very much.